I know. I know most players have like a a pre routine and a ritual before a football game. And like Wayne Rooney, he eats cocoa pops. Ronaldo, he has a fresh haircut before every game. Um, do you guys, as uh, professional footballers, do you have a routine that you have going into a match? I'll ask that first to uh, James. Um, I don't know. They have, you, have, you have like weird behaviours a little bit, like, but nothing, nothing uh, that I have to really do. Um, I can't have a routine of um, you just try and eat a little bit better, but I don't really have a routine. I'm not that super superstitious, to be honest. Um, I just try and keep everything um, like as, as good as possible. But yeah, not, not particularly um, anything superstitious that I have to do. Uh, and Lee? Yeah, I'm sort of the same, to be honest with you. I'm um, not overly superstitious. Um, I do like, I do have my habits, but not really is, is something that I can break out. I know out there, is, quite there, is, there is some strange ones. I know what he's got a few strange ones. Uh, Cal's got one. Cal's got one. Yeah, I've got got loads. I am when it comes to match day. Yeah, me and Watty are probably the worst. How long we got? We oh, I would be here all day. Honestly, I've got some that you just sit there and think, what? Like you would, you wouldn't. Well, one normal one, Brownie. I always have to go out second, don't I? Yeah, yeah. I was just about to say. I was waiting for you to say it. (laughs) I always have to go out in the tunnel. Like when we come out for the for the uh, kickoff, I always have to come out second, well behind Craig, so second outfielder. Um, there was one game I didn't come out second. It was I think it was we got beat, and I just I just blame that. That's that's why really, I didn't yeah. come out. Oh, you done that the last four games, or what? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't need to say that. Yeah, better get, better get second on Saturday. <laughs> I know. No, I've got some. I've got some weird ones. I always put my Right boot on first. Um, eat the same stuff, obviously. I, yeah, I've just got some that that I just do without even thinking about really. You need to knock that on the head, mate. What is worse than me? What, yeah, what, what is his bar? With his really, body? I've never noticed what you know. No, he doesn't. Uh, he won't. He won't. So he, he does his hair every day of the week. Like gels it, puts all the products in, and then the day before the game, he won't touch his hair. He won't yeah, touch his. Yeah. Really? Out, what on a Friday? Yeah. Yeah, no, so no, I've never even noticed Friday, that. You can't touch his hair. Really? really? I don't yeah. know. So I'm going to try and pick that up tomorrow. Yeah, you will. You'll see it tomorrow. He won't touch it. No, he won't. he's not playing. Fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As, um, as defenders, um, who's your toughest opponent uh, that you've faced in your career? Well, there'll be a few name drops here. Well, then no, you go first. You you what about when you're playing oh. the championship, Brian? You must have a few from them, lad. Yeah, they would take them. Yeah, when I come on that for that thirty seconds, that was tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bought um, a hamstring. <laughs> yeah, bought a hamstring. Go on, folks. You got a few. Go on, name a few then. Uh, I, I, it's, it's not not always the name drops. are always the hardest you come up against. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, like yeah, I mean, there's some great names out there, attacker wise, and you've got yeah, them, um, like, defender. It's hard work, isn't it? You're yeah. Just I've had probably hard times against players you've probably not really heard of. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I don't. I don't know. It's hard to say. Obviously, you could drop some names, but yeah, yeah like I say, I would. I probably not. There's nobody that really stands out. Um, that's a big name or out. Just just players that um, like you, you know you've had a you, you've had a tough game. We'll wait till you get in the Premiership then first, yeah. Yeah, that, that'll be nice. Nathan, Nathan Dyer was for one for. Yeah, he was a powerful. He was a powerful guy, wasn't he? Very strong. Yeah. Nathan Tyler. Yeah, yeah. We had, we had when we uh, t- we played against Tyore, and I was he, he came onto my side for like five seconds, but he gave he gave the he was on the right hand side. And he gave the left back an absolute. Sorry, I'm just begging he didn't come on my side again. Um, but yeah, he he was he was something else. His turn of pace was just scary. And um, as um, as obviously professional footballers, they move from club to clubs. Um, Callum, what, 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 what's it like? What's it, what's it like when when you um, sort of know that you're leaving a club? And obviously, what's it like when you join a new club? Is it is it still nervous? And you, do you get butterflies about joining a new club and obviously a new ethos about that? Yeah, it's obviously exciting. Like when you, especially when you join a big club like Portsmouth, I was 
I was buzzing, but everything that goes around it sort of it's a bit of a whirlwind to be honest. Like it goes so quick, and when I signed the, the games were straight, it quite came thick and fast straight away. So that helped me settle. I think the games, oh, but you get and, and um, yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. It was they're they're the, they're the things you want in football, aren't they? You know, getting moves to to bigger clubs and um, yeah, it was exciting. And obviously, Lee, you you've had uh, quite a few few clubs and a, a good career. Is that is that is that the same for you? Was it you were nervous from moving from club to club? Yeah, I think I think I think when you go into any change room, the first day it's like the first day of school. I think it's it's quite intimidating, really, because you've got twenty five big characters all looking at you, trying to see what you've got. If you don't do it on that first day, people are making first impressions all the time. Um, so yeah, it is a bit daunting. I think I think it's something you do get used to, but it's always. You always get a little bit of butterflies when you walk into a new change room, for sure. For sure, yeah. And um, this, this, um, these last few seasons, obviously being without the fans, did, has that had an effect on the way you play um, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a professional footballer? Oh, I'll ask that uh, to, to Lee as you're on here. Yeah, yeah, the, um, yeah. I think so. I think I think the, it, it, I think it, so many people have spoke about it in terms of. What it what it brings, but if you if you're inside that change room, inside that stadium like we are, it's so quiet. It's like, it's like a morgue, it's, which we're not really used to. Well, we're not used to that at all, really. In terms of when when Fratton is rocking, it, it's rocking. It gives it everyone that ten percent, and it's sort of especially the last twenty minutes in games when you're pushing. It, I just think I just think teams crumble under the pressure, especially when. When there's, a, when there's a really good atmosphere, I think players, teams crumble. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's affected us quite a bit, to be honest. All right. And um, and and Callum, um, for you, uh, when you first started, you were in uh, centre midfield, I believe, and then obviously yeah. you've gone back. Now you're in defence. Was that was that your decision, or was that um, guidance from a coach or uh, from someone else? Um. I was about 15 when I first moved to fullback. I was really small and not very really physical. I couldn't really cope anymore. Not, not cope, but I couldn't really... When I was 15, everyone started turning into men, you know, and I was still young for my age. I was really skinny, really small. So I got moved to fullback uh, where it was a bit less physical. And, um, yeah, I ended up doing well there and I enjoyed it. And then I, when I sat down back when I did play in centre midfield, I, I got sort of switch between the two really um, but yeah full back I think suits me better and I think I've took some things from being a midfielder that hopefully give me a bit of an advantage obviously you get less time on the ball and, but yeah a bit of both obviously I've played the last whatever few two three years uh, full back but my first I think it was 10-15 games in league two for Akron and I was centre midfielder yeah so and, Ever uh, since I was a young lad, I was a centre midfielder. Though to be fair, then when I, yeah, it was when I when I was fifteen that that's when I got moved re- and and started to play full back as well. Yeah. And you, and do you, you think you could go back into midfield, or is that you happy now where you are as a as a sort of position that suits you now? Um, I'd give it a go, yeah, but I think I'm I probably suit to a full back. No way, stay at full back, you yeah. <laughs> what am I hearing? Yeah, I go in midfield. <laughs> De Bruyne and James, similar to yourself, sort of question. Um, you know, has, has it always been a defender for you, or have you played uh, in other positions? Um, yeah, actually, actually, very similar to Callum. Callum like, um, although you wouldn't never believe it, I see shocking brownie's face. Uh, I used to be, I used to be a midfielder as well, but I think, like you say, somebody, somebody was ill um, one day and asked me to go to centre half, um, and I. I'd, I'd done well, so I, like, and then it kind of went from there. Um, I was a centre half, like, from a youth team, and then um, as I went into men's football, uh, I think like to cope with the physical demands. I think he put me out to right back, and um, and then I kind of played there, and obviously been switching to and from a little bit. Uh, but yeah, pretty similar to Callum as a kid. Um, like I said, I don't think there's many people that that grow up. Um, like being defenders, I think they kind of get moved there quite a lot. 
Go on, ask Brown if he's played in midfield. <laughs> uh, left winger. <laughs> left winger, I used to be. The gazelle. That was when I was quick. No way. Uh... <laughs> Under 12s. <laughs> yeah. Under 12, you could take on 12 players, couldn't you? Yeah, that's it. Everyone was okay and had a few skills and that, but now it just, I don't know where that goes. Edit and kick it now. Yeah, that that deteriorates when you get that. Yeah, that does. And and obviously, now we're in, we're literally on the uh, the tail end of the season um, with like, you know, literally four games to go. Um, How's how's the um, the mood and the training going now with uh, obviously with the, the change of management? Uh, is training uh, more physical? Is it is it still relaxed and enjoyable? Um, how how do you think we're gonna, you know, compete these next few games? Uh, I lost that to Lee. Oh, I was waiting to see that. Um, no, no, I think the boys are in a in a in a good mindset in terms of look, it's four four cup finals really to get into the playoffs, um, and that's how they've got to be looked at. I think the new managers come in. Obviously, we had a we had a good start. To we won four on the bounce. Then we've sort of dropped off it a little bit of late. Um, but now I think we've got to sort of regather and and go. Look, there's four to go. We ain't we ain't got nothing to lose here. We got to put everything on the line. It's been a long hard season. So um, I think the boys are positive, but it's all right talking about it. And we've done a lot of talking in meetings and. Stuff like that, which the manager likes, he loves. He loves his one-to-one meetings and meetings. But I think the proof will be in the pudding on on Saturday afternoon when when we need to get three points. Definitely. Uh, is there is there anyone um, from the past that um, that you sort of look at as a sort of a sporting um, hero? As in, you 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 know, he was a good defender. Is there anyone that you could pick out? Who's who's up for? Is that? Uh, I'll go. I'll go for Callum because Callum hasn't talked for a while, but. As a, as a sort of as a good defender, is there anyone that you that stands out for you? Um, well, when I was a kid, I was a midfielder, so I always liked the midfielders and the foul thinking players. Didn't really take much note the defenders. Um, nowadays, well, if you go on, when I was a kid, I liked the uh, I was Steven Gerrard, Janino, because I was a Middlesbrough fan. Um, I fancied myself as a bit more of a midfielder, but nowadays. Those right backs I like watching Luke Erling for Leeds. Um, I spoke to Nicky actually the other day about right backs that I watch Luke Erling for Leeds. Um, who's that? Who's that geezer? Who's that geezer at Morecambe? I'm sure not the one I'm talking about. Morecambe. <laughs> Morecambe. <laughs> <laughs> who's the ball at Morecambe with it? And he had the the copers. Is it? Um, and he had his shorts up by his by his chest. You what, you saying, be, what are you saying? That's it. That's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I need to get his name, man. Oh, what's his name? Oh, I don't know. I thought we wanted what, to. What, left back or yeah. right back? No, right back. Right back. Pre- so back. Pete. 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 In the, not, in, the, in the lower leagues. I, the I like to say I've got a good football knowledge, but I'm, I'm lost here. Oh, no. How far are we going back here, Brownie? This is before I was born. <laughs> no, how old do you think I am, mate? <laughs> no, and I'm going back a couple of years ago. <laughs> Morecambe. Uh, no, you boys, are, you boys ain't done the journey. Like, what, 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 young what young pop, like, Brownie, it's all it is, mate. Uh, you boys ain't done the League Two journey. I have. Have you not, though? I'll skip that. Pre- um, I think I'll oh, no, come, yeah, come to you, Brownie. Yeah, it comes to me. Yeah. I think it's James' turn now for questions. I think, I think I've asked a few. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the questions are good, because I am doing a journalism course, so they're pretty crap then. They look quite embarrassing. But, um, yeah, so I thought, kind of relating to the like what players you... Um, I looked at and aspired to be. Obviously, when you realise you're going more into like a defensive position, is it? Um, how does your obviously? I suppose Callum, your training went from midfield to more defending practice. But do, does your um, almost like a set like a mentality, like a in terms of what tactics you look at and like what players you look at in terms of like a Neville or um, more modern fullbacks now? Like, did it change from who you almost aspire? 
think so. Yeah, I think when you when you're watching games, well, I don't know if it's just me, but I always tend to look at the right back, the, the players in my position, and just more naturally, I just think, oh, what's he doing there? What's he doing there? And then obviously, when you change, when you start to realise, I'm I'm gonna hopefully one day be a defend defensive player or defender or fullback or whatever. You start to watch them more and take note of what they're doing, even just games where you're watching, you know, when you're in the academies and you're watching maybe the older ages, you you might watch the, the fullback or what's the, what does he do in this situation? So I think so, yeah, just watching the analysis on, there was some analysis the other day on Trent, they were on about Trent's defending, I was watching. So I just take note of that naturally because I'm thinking, oh yeah, but I think it was yeah, Carragher and uh, Alex Scott, uh, they were saying about, they were talking about Trent. Um, So yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think you just, you tend to watch, you know, who's playing in your position. Cool. And I think um, because obviously the fans aren't there this um, season and the last season as well, does, um, if you go to like games, I saw a game in the Premier League where United lost like 6-1 to Tottenham. And I, I do think like with fans there, like they just don't lose by that much. Do you think like it's affected how you guys play a lot this season as well? Just to anyone. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I, I, I think it does affect a little bit. I think everyone wants to win and and that, but that extra ten percent, I think it, it it's too easy to go under. I think for players when there's no fans there, and it which is not good really. But everyone is human being, and that's what that's just what happens. Sort of thing. When when there's players and when there's when there's supporters in the stadium, you've got that pressure that. You ain't gonna make it out of the stadium alive if you start losing mm-hmm. six, seven nils. But so I just think it does give you that little bit of edge. I think you lose that a little bit. Yeah. I think sure. for myself, I think I think even even before the game and the build up towards the game, like and you, when you feel that energy in the crowd, it does give you that that extra percent. And I think it, you'd notice it more when there's no no fans now. I think you, you, I'm not saying that, you, but you've got to psych yourself up a little bit more, like. For yourself, rather than getting the buzz off the crowd, I think it's it's, it's it is it is hard. Um, but that's what I think. Like you say, I think we've we've been affected by it this year, um, like massively. Because like you say, when when Fratton is rocking, it's it, it's something pretty special. So it's I think it has it has affected us a little bit without maybe thinking about it too much. Um, it's yeah, it's 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 like you say it's been a weird couple of years, but um hopefully next year you'll um fans will be back in. I saw a interview with the goalkeeper Ben Foster and he said over his time in the dressing room he's seen um like how the dressing room talk, like how the players talk to each other in terms of how their health or even their mental health is. He said when he was the first starting to play. Um, like that type of thing was just never spoken about. But he said um, recently a player at Watford or wherever could just say, oh, I'm having a really bad day today. And all the others would be like, oh, yeah, it's more, the conversations are less restricted and they're more, not shunned upon now and it's more open. Have you seen stuff like that over your career? Yeah, I think so. I think so. In in my early career when I was 18 and stuff, bloody hell, you, you lot are making me sound really old, I'll be honest. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, but I, I think, I think you're true what you're saying in terms of when I was younger, 18, looking in, um, it, you would never, ever show any weakness. It was sort of, you show weakness, you're weak. Um, don't talk about feelings. No, you don't have no feelings. It was sort of, that was the perception you had to be um, to sort of toughen up. Um, but now I think it's it's very much a, um, in people's minds. Look, people do talk, I think, just day to day, like people say now, oh yeah, I feel like crap, or I don't feel that great today, or in whatever respect that was, or mental, don't feel right just in himself. I think people just have that conversation now, um, where before I don't think they did. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it for my questions. Thanks, guys. I think um, on on the sort of the back of that sort of question there from James, um, obviously when you're playing in front of fans and it's really it's a toxic environment whether you're winning or whether you're losing um how do you guys um unwind um to you know to, to literally de-stress yourselves um do you have like any sort of like where you just go to a, a quiet place or is there somewhere something you do um after a game or is it with a family 
Yeah, so I'm really big on my yoga at the moment. So, Bugs, why are you laughing? Can you believe that you're full <laughs> yoga? <laughs> so, obviously, as you can see, I'm really Why do you keep getting a hamstring then? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, so, I mean, I just ain't got the right technique on the hamstring one. <laughs> no, I, 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 think, I think in terms of unwinding, I think I think if you've got family and young children, it's quite easy to switch off in that respect. Um, I don't know about chill out, but it's sort of a distraction from all the noise, which there is a lot of noise when you play football and you can get eaten up, eaten up in it. Um, so it is nice to come away, shut your door, and you know your family is sort of. Hello. Whatever. I think, is I think he's on the still. iPhone. <laughs> it's not a good not iPhone. Not a good advert for iPhone. Brownie doesn't need to stress. I mean, if I was Brownie, I'd just look at his bank account if I was stressed. <laughs> <laughs> you can always just you can always just lob the ball at another player, I suppose, like you did your last couple of games. That weren't me. Why are you starting rumours for? No, I just, well, it must have been a lookalike. <laughs> it's all fun and games, isn't it? During during the um, during the COVID, uh, did did much change uh, in regard to uh, the playing the game? Obviously, now with obviously there's no ball boys, and uh, you just get on the pitch now and and just play. But obviously, when before, obviously, everyone's outside play, wearing masks and stuff like that. Obviously, you guys are still playing football. Um, has there ever been a worry uh, with you playing football during the COVID period? Um, I think for, for, for myself, I think I think people were tedious at the start, like um, people that had like um, families and, and kids and stuff. But for me, I've always been quite... It sounds bad, but that's probably why I caught it like five times. I was quite relaxed about it all um, and didn't really, um, I don't know, I, I, like you say, I probably didn't do what I, what I should have um, in terms wow. of, of having the mask that. when you go to the shop, the supermarket and all that kind of stuff um, and, and doing all your hands and all that. Um, so I, I think, yeah, it's, it's just kind of... Um, gone from there kind of thing. I think a lot of people have were, were worried at first, um, but I think now it's it's just normality now a little bit and I think everyone's kind of used to it. Yeah, nice, James. Yeah, I, I was good on that. Yeah, that, went yeah, that was good. Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> I liked it. It is, <laughs> is there, is, there, uh, is there any other sports you like um, doing except football? Uh, not really. Uh, you just not really. No there's, no, there's not. I don't really like any other sport, really. To be honest, I don't know. I don't know what a few of the boys like the golf and stuff like that. But I've, obviously, I'm big into my yoga, so I'm I'm not really um, into that golf swing and that. There's no more uh, boxing, Kev the Kit man again then. No, no, he's too heavy-handed. Him. Yeah. Is Cal still on here or what? He's been yeah, so quiet. Yeah, he's on mute. He's still What's here. What's he doing? Playing PlayStation or something? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah, mate, we've only been here 10 minutes. You ain't spoke a word. <laughs> Listening to you rambling on. Jesus Christ, help me out here. <laughs> rambling on about yoga. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to relate to the yoga talk, to be honest. Well, are you stiff, are you? Well, you know, not, not too bad. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Do you think um, playing on a, a Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday is is as exhausting as what they say it is? Go on, Cal. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that is your answer. There's no way we're allowing that to be his answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you explain it? It's hard to explain, like... Well, you say, is it... A is it is it tiring and going into a bit more detail than yeah it is. How how, how, do, how, do, you, how, how do you go into recovery mode then? Is it is it, um, is there a, is there a good uh, a good procedure after a match ready to get? For, I mean, obviously Saturday to Tuesday. Uh, the new gaffer loves the cryo chamber. Yeah, cryo chamber. Everyone's oh, yeah. been in there. You've got to just do everything you can: cryo chamber, deep tissue massage, foam roll, stretch, 
ice baths, literally everything, eat right, everything you can. Cryo yeah. chambers, the, it goes to minus, what is it, minus 130 or something. We go in there for like two minutes, but Gaffer's big on that, so everyone's everyone's getting in, into that, and that's supposed to um, you know, in, increase, increase the speed of your uh, recovery. So that does help, and it's supposed to help with sleep as well. Sleep's important, but it, it, it's tough, yeah, especially when you're running, you know, 11, 12K or 9K like Brownie. Is he joking? 11, 12K, by the have, way. Have a, what I ra- have a look what I ran on Saturday. Have a look what I yeah, ran Yeah, but look at Saturday. your high speed. You can't just plod around the pitch and say you've got 11, 12K. 750 high speed. Mate, your high speed's 400. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, 50, 750. 750. No, me and me, me both are more in the thousand high speed, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? 900s. Have you got Wait, all your stats on a piece of paper? <laughs> You get to doing your army. <laughs> That's what I mean. When you when you when you're as quick as me, you're susceptible to all the army pulls. So you get to see That's each other, isn't it? Sir, you get to see each other's stats. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is, which is good, really. I think I think where, that's where the games moved on a bit. Where. Where we wear GPS now is sort of you can sort of see where the level you're at in terms of how much distance you're covering, what speed you're doing it at, um, how many sprints, how many decelerations. So it's literally a, a whole whole thing on every single player. So uh, no, it's good. It's good. It's good to know where you are, but fitness wise as well. Cowleys have set up uh, scaffolding now, haven't they, for like recording the mat, the training? So I suppose there's no uh, slacking now, is there? Yeah, they've done that. Um, we have to watch out every morning. Under the um, the new the new uh, manager, is training still competitive um, as well as well as fun? I think, I think because we so many games. I think um, had to be real tailored. <laughs> You're breaking Thanks, up. Sorry. No Wi-Fi in Bill's car. Nah, there's no Wi-Fi in here. Just, uh, just 4G. Go on, Paul, take the question away. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, like you say, it's um, it's a lot more intense and um, it's a lot more detail. And like you say, with Brown, he was saying about Saturday, Tuesday, it's hard to get so much work in um, because lads are always recovering um, from games. Um, so... Yeah, it's 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 just a different kind of style. But like you say, I quite I quite like the intensity of, of training the way it is, and that's high. And that, I think that's when you get the best out of, of people. But it, it, like you say, it'd be nice to get a, a couple of free weeks where you can do um, do a bit more training. Um, it's no good when you're not playing games like yourself. It's it feels like you're not you're not really doing anything. So um, you, you you want you want them them tough training sessions. Do you know what I mean? So being a, the, um, being a being a defender in is you still like you still you still don't like conceding goals even in training. Say again, sorry. You still don't like conceding goals in training as well as a match. No, no. I think like you say, you've got to take that intensity from training and then put it into the game. I think that's how you 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 build yourself up through the week and then and then make sure everything's right and then it's right on the Saturday, hopefully. No, I was just saying. I was just going to answer the, uh, not answer the question, but basically saying, um, you know, with uh, Total AV on my computer, I've managed to watch, you know, the I follow, support you guys uh, through this season through COVID, because uh, I'm living in Malta at the moment. So I'm hoping that once the flights get back put get put back on, then I'll be able to f- fly over and see you guys in person. But for yeah, now, Bill. for now, it's just uh, I follow for me. 